Just lift your hand and just tell him, Lord, I want to be where you are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just begin to bless him in your own words. Bless him in your own words. Tell him how good he is. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, brother, back at city. La brother, basoko to brother, baske. Ejo la bahai. Can you worship him now? In your own words, just tell him how good he is. Magnify our King this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, brother Bahia, let him be brother Bahia. Great also to go brother Bahia. La brother Basata la Bahia. La brother Basata. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Glory to God. Lord, we love you. Hallelujah. Come on. Jam your hands together. Give him a shout. Give him a praise. This morning. Hallelujah. Please take your seats. Glory to God. Okay, we'll have to jump right into it quickly. This is our marriage month. Amen. So, uh, interestingly, because um, we are a bit popular, I am PM, for preaching about marriage, you know, all over the world. And we have large social media and YouTube and all that following on our marriage teaching pages. Um, many people actually think in my church... Every Sunday is what I preach on. I manage what I preach every Sunday. You know, some people think that's all I do, but um, I always tell them that in our own church, it's only once a month that we do a series on marriage. I mean, once a year, sorry. One month in a year that we do a series on marriage. Every other month of the year, we teach every other thing every normal church teaches. You know, prayer, um, prosperity, healing, discipleship, everything every normal church does. So this is that one month in the year where we teach marriage, all right, in DCC. Hallelujah. So um, one of the things I need you to help me to do is that this month try and invite your friends, your family, people you know, your neighbors, um, people that you know that are married or planning to be married or just like marriage. This is the kind of month to invite them because we're going to focus on that all through this month. So um, especially if you have friends that have challenges in their marriages, this is a good time to invite them to church. So I need your cooperation with that. Everybody should participate in that, all right? Very, very, very important. Um, also, um, this month, towards the end of the month, we have a marriage conference. So that is a Saturday that is dedicated to um, teach, do, do a marriage conference. And um, it's for married people and engaged people. If you are engaged to be married or you're already married, that conference is for you. It's a Saturday Saturday, what is it, um, 21st, um, yes, and um, my friend um, Hassani Pettiford, all the way from the United States, will also be ministering in that event. Um, we don't have a poster that has that, you have to have that. So um, my friend Hassani is going to minister alongside with me on this day, so um, you want to be there for married couples, and um, we're hoping we can also have even breakout sessions in that one where people, that, um, people can talk on family finance, talk on sex and marriage, talk on parenting in a smaller group where you can ask questions and get practical. So basically, um, you don't want to miss this for a married person. And please also invite people. This year's edition is free. We normally don't do it free, but this year's edition is free. Hallelujah. Because on Sunday, the married people agreed that they would sponsor it. That was the meeting we had. To be a married person, don't make me a liar. Don't make you a liar. Don't make God a lie. We all promise we'll sponsor it, so let's do what we said we'll do last week. Have you, Pastor Jethro? Have you brought, did you have the IV you want to give out to? 
okay, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> All right, but, but we wanted to invite people, your friends, again for that particular event. Now, if you're also here or you know someone that has a flair or a gift for family life coaching, you know, um, you have an interest or you have a passion or you're already a counselor or, or you want to be a marriage counselor, we have a training for people like that. Um, it is a family life practitioners conference. So that is holding um, also on the 19th. That will be on hold on the island church. That one is a paid event because it's a training, all right? And again, we have a host of other speakers that will speak alongside. I wish you guys have the complete posters. This poster is just putting me and Pastor Mildred everywhere. We're not the ones speaking. So we have um, Ocholi Okotikma is going to speak. Bisi Adewale is going to speak. Those that were there last year knew that that was amazing. Uh, Paul Fo is going to talk about making sales. Then Hassan is also going to speak from the U.S. So, and this event is also going to hold in Abuja. So if you have friends and family in Abuja that are in that industry or interest, look, some of you need to water the gift you have. All the things I do, I started with just a burden in my heart. It's not that I saw an angel that said, my son, that shall go around the earth and teach on good marriage. No, I just had a burden for marriages, for relationships, and I began to water that seed and see how far God has taken it. So um, make sure you water the gift and passions and interest you have. But if you have in this area in particular, um, or you have friends, it will hold in Lagos, it will hold in Abuja, 23rd, then it will also hold in London for trainers too. So please make sure you tell your friends and family. Praise God. Let them take advantage of it. Then we also have Loved It Now Marriage holding in Abuja also. That one is for everybody, single or married. So please, again, if you have friends and family in Abuja, let them know we have that, that event on Sunday evening of 23rd. All right? Then if you have friends and family in the UK, the announcement alone has taken all the time of the message, but <laughs> we will do it. All right, so um, also, um, if you have friends family in the UK, we'll be touring the UK, London, Birmingham, Manchester, Scotland, and Ireland. So please let me text and call your folks there. They should attend. And if you have anybody in California or anywhere near that area, we'll also be there November 11th. Praise God. All right, a good son of mine is getting married. He's a very, very special son of mine. Hallelujah. <laughs> Okay, ah, some of you already know. He's a, he's a very, very special son of mine. So please, let's welcome Dio Eyes. Welcome him. A very, very good son of mine. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Wear your suits so that you look sharp. It's only you I call, though. Don't call anybody. Come. Don't call anybody yet. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's, it's marriage month, so we can, we can make noise. All right. Um, he's, such a, he's such a great guy. He's such a great guy. Um, everybody agrees. You see that? You see the shouting, so you know that it's not me being partial. It's real. Um, he's also a wedding MC, one of the best in the world. In fact, me, I take my authority as a servant of God. I say you are the best in the world. Uh -huh, I prophesy it over you. Um, he's a wedding MC, and he, he, he has um, anchored weddings everywhere you want to imagine. Global, totally global. He has anchored weddings here in Nigeria, in um, Europe, in London. In Amer he's going to America this um, month. So he's a global MC, particularly for weddings. One of the biggest ever. All right, and he's a very, very good son of mine. Very good son of mine. Hardly involved in any drama or any nonsense. Just serving the Lord, and uh, and he's getting married. Yeah. Hallelujah! To one very beautiful, nice lady. So yeah, go and bring her now. Please clap for him, and as, as we welcome Temi Tope Olukunle, his wife, to be. Please, guys, help me welcome her. Help me clap for her. Uh -huh. Hold the hand. I, you, don't, you see how I do for PM? You have to be learning this thing. How are you, my dear? Well done. Nice to meet you. Well done. Are you planning to take him out of this church? So you're planning to join this church? Uh -huh. Camera. Make sure you cut that on tape. <laughs> Praise God. But welcome. Welcome. Nice to meet you. I hope he's been a good boy. He's a good boy at home, oh, so I said he's doing that thing outside, but at home he's well behaved. So you're welcome to the family. Can we stretch our hands towards them? 
Father, we thank you for this wonderful couple. Their journey will be sweet and fruitful. Their own marriage will be a testimony all over the world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. When is the wedding? Wait now. When is the wedding? October 19. So will you be the MC? It can be, you can do it. It can be first ever done. I'm telling you, think about it. It will go viral. Oh. Wedding MC MCs his own wedding. He don't go already. Eh? Consider it. We know hard. You just say, now the bride and groom will do this thing that you... <laughs> Now, the bread and crew will. <laughs> it's the first ever. I've never had it done. So, you can be the first to ever do it. It's creativity. Send me my commission. <laughs> so, please, uh, you are all invited to the wedding. Um, not the reception or the church wedding. Now, the reception is by, strictly by Ivy. But at least I know that you can come for the church wedding and make sure you support them finances, prayers. Moral support. Make sure you support them. Praise God. Okay, so to, um, we're starting the series titled Power, Money, and Sex. Come and say with me, Power, Money, and Sex. Power, money, and sex. All right. Usually these three things are one of the most important three things that affect a marriage. There are more things, but um, Power, Money, and Sex generally common as things that cause problems in a marriage. So the way we're going to do this whole month series is that I and PM are going to be doing it together so that you will hear from the male perspective and you hear from the female perspective. So in this service, this first service I'm going to share, uh, what today, today is power, we're talking about power today. I'm going to share. Then in the second service, PM is going to share. This is one of those kind of Sundays that you can stay for two services. Our services are usually short and fast. So if I were you, I would stay for the two services because you know PM preaches better than me. Praise God. Uh -huh. She has more fans. She has more everything. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, everywhere we go now, people say, ah, I want to hear Pastor Mildred. So I don't like to take her when I'm going to preach again now. <laughs> you know, so um, she's going to preach across service. So you will hear the same um, topic discussed from a woman's perspective, you know. Because some people always feel, oh, men always, men always. Second service, you hear women always. You hear her own version of how we look at that. There's these three things, power, money, and sex. Now, on that thing I needed to do, um, Amaka and Femi and Co, please make sure. Um, I want you to send questions for every message. Send any question you have today now, send it so that we would, we would take one midweek service or something or whatever as the series goes and address your questions because sometimes in church we just teach at people, they are not able to apply because it doesn't, they, they, have, um, they don't understand. So um, this particular month we would like to hear from you. So um, ask your questions um, on each topic throughout the month, then before the end of the series, we'll do a Q&A to answer those questions. All right? So please, um, arrange away, and somebody should be collating them, and we'll, we'll address all of them. Praise God. Is that a good idea? Okay, so power, money, and sex. So we're starting with power today. We're starting with power today. And by power, we mean maybe leadership, control of the home, head of the home situation. That's one of the first areas problem arises in a home. And let's go to Genesis where the Bible says, it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to find him a help meet. DJ, bring it up. Is there a DJ in the house? Eh? No lights. Okay. <laughs> All right. It says, um, and Adam gave what? Names to all the... No, no, I, I want where it says, uh, yes. Where the, and the Lord God said, who is the one that said? Good. He says, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him what? I can't hear you. I will make him what? So first thing I need you to note is that the structure of marriage was designed by the creator of marriage. Because one of the things causing problems these days is that People are trying to control God or advise God or teach God or correct God on how a marriage works. You are not the one that created marriage. Can you just follow the creator with how he designed it? He's the one that started it. It's not your idea. You met it here. He's the creator of it. And he said, I will make him what? Please take note. He didn't say I will make him a help mate. There's no mate in marriage. Because people quote the scripture like mate, a help mate. 
Man and woman are equal in life. Man and woman are equal in Christ. But man and woman are not equal in the home. I'll say that again. Man and woman are equal in life. A, a man is not superior to a woman in any shape or form in life. That means a woman can get a better job. A woman can um, beat a man in exams. A woman can um, sometimes even beat a man physically. <laughs> you know, so in life, there is no discrimination. A, a man is not superior to a woman because some people walk around with that mentality that women are inferior beings. That's, that's archaic and barbaric and, and, and stupidic. That makes no sense. And man and woman are equal in Christ. The Bible said we should deal with each other as joint heirs of salvation. In redemption in Christ, there's no difference between male or female. We are both, inherit we are both inheriting the, the grace of God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? But in a marriage structure, which is what this is talking about, man and woman are not mates. And let me say, if you also say this, the teachings of the Bible are for Christians. It might not make sense to people that are not yielded to God. So if you are not a Christian or you are one of those people that think you are a Christian but you are not, we will offend you this month a lot. The teachings of the Bible are for people that are already submitted to God. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? It's for people already what? Submitted to God. Man and woman are not mates in a home. It's, it doesn't even mean the man is superior. It just means their roles and their rank are different. Their roles, their position, their function. Are so they are not meet. This scripture says, help meet. What does meet mean? In some versions, I don't know if they can find that. Maybe it's amplified or whatever. But the original context there says, a helper that is suitable, adaptable, and comparable. Thank you. Or complementary, sorry. Thank you. Amplify. Thank you. He said, I, 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 it's not beneficial for the man to be alone. I will make him what? A helper. A helper. This, that's another very important word we'll look at. A helper. Who, one who balances him. A counterpart who is suitable and complementary for him. I want to they said adaptable. Because that's what, and actually in the original um, um, writing. What it actually says is a helper that is suitable. And this one says adapted. Good. It's suitable and adaptable. So, notice who is doing the adapting. It's the helper. You can't come and help somebody and want to control the person. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, I'm rushing. Normally, I'll pet you into what I'm saying, but no time. And uh, Normally, I'll pet you and scripturally, you know, build you up before I start telling you the truth. But I've used my time to do announcements. So, I'm rushing straight to punching you. No time. I'll tell you sorry after. Very few preachers today can outrightly say these things because people are trying to be politically correct, trying to be nice. We're following what the scripture says. In the design of God, I see, the reason why marriages are not working is that we have left the design of God. We're trying to use men's principle to run marriage. Marriages will suffer more. The design of God is better. It might look hard, but it's safer. Because he created the marriage. I'm not the one that created it. He's the one that even says it's not good for man to be alone. I'm not the one that said it. But he said, you know what? Because of the role the man plays, the helper should be ready to adapt. Part of what makes you a good eligible spinster, is that what they call a woman that is not married? What makes you an eligible spinster is how adaptable you are. What makes you an eligible bachelor is actually how vision-oriented you are. So there are two different things. Because what God first gave the man was a job, a vision. You see, it is that job of vision that determines the helper you need. It's not all helpers that are suitable. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. It's not all helpers that are suitable. So what, what's happening now is that people are just marrying without understanding the context of the marriage. You're, you're, you're marrying <laughs> a fine girl that is not suitable. You're marrying a touche girl that is not suitable. What you are looking for is a helper that is what? Suitable. It's not all helpers that are suitable. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not all helpers that are suitable. If I desperately need somebody that can drive, and all the girls are saying, 
I, I, I. And I said, can you drive? He said, no, but I want to be your helper. You are not going to help me. Two of us are going to need help. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the helper has to be suitable. That's why I say, woman, is not every man you can marry. I say, man, it's not every woman you can marry. I have seen cases where a pastor marries an usher's wife. A pastor marries a businessman's wife. What do I mean by that? If you are going to marry a pastor, there's a lifestyle and sacrifice involved in that. You can't be saying, why are you going at every day? Why don't you follow me home immediately after church? If you are talking like that, you know somebody has married the wrong person. Because there's a lifestyle required to marry a pastor. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? You can't be a baby. And I've seen many, uh, trust me, <laughs> I've seen churches where Sunday morning, the pastor wants to go to church, the wife will jack his church, you're not going anywhere. Sunday morning, not Sunday morning. I've seen cases where in a church, the pastor's wife slaps people. So it's what I'm saying. It's not everybody that is suitable. She can be a nice woman if she had married an usher that had nobody. Because normally if you're a pastor, oh, you're greeting women. You're greeting uh, everybody. Fine ones, ugly ones, short ones, tall ones. Some want counseling, some want to call you. If you're a very jealous person. So why I love you? And I'm, I'm telling you, these are all real life stories. Where the pastor is, oh, greeting people, hugging people. The wife just goes, why are you hugging him, him like that? Why are you hugging him? Real story. Real story. Some, he will slap the girl. That, you know that is slap? That is slap is the spectators that he pays more than the person. <laughs> like, oh, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not them they slap, but he, he, that is slap affects neighbors. Real stories. Real stories. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you marry some men, the kind of job they do involves traveling. If you're the kind of woman that can't sit, on your own for one month. If your husband is not around, you, then you have married the wrong person. So if you leave them for two weeks, they will marry that person before you come back. <laughs> I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. So it's not all helpers that work together. No, some people can't. If you are marrying a diplomat, there's a way your life has to be. You, you can't go and do any business. You and your husband travel as diplomat. You, 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 you are selling black market fuel. <laughs> I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So there's a light. There, it's not all helpers. It's not all helpers that are suitable. If you're marrying a king, you must understand royalty. You're not, you're not more a normal human being. Because I've seen people that have married a king, I want to be relating like every. No, no. From the day you marry a king, you can't go out anyhow. Have you seen all those couples or people that have married a king? Maybe, you know, Olu of Wari or any of these kings. There's a lifestyle to it. You don't just you don't come out just wear your short nigga. <laughs> With your hairnet, hairnet. <laughs> Sound to go and buy crayfish down the road. <laughs> then you don't understand what, what you entered. So it's not all help us. So the man must have a vision. It is that vision for the man that determines who he chooses to help him. And as a helpy. You two need to know whether I can, do I fit into this person's life. Or oh, sorry, as a helper. You need to know, do I fit in? So this is structured biblically. A man is the leader of the home because he's the one that presents the vision. When he wants to marry a woman, it's not I love you, I love you. It's more of recruitment. It's I need help. <laughs> I feel you are the one that will help me. Yes. I feel I don't know how to help me. So the woman must come with that mentality that I'm coming to serve and help. It doesn't mean you are inferior. It's like you're going to work in a company. They sit in the accountant. If you're not an accountant, you can't apply. Because I like, I like this office. The vacancy of accountants say, I'm an engineer, but I like your building. <laughs> no, it's accountants we need. Because this person must be able to sit down for hours and crush numbers. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must fit into the role. If not, you'll suffer. Then that's when you will start fighting. Then you as the woman wants to dominate the man and teach him what to do. No. A man's core function is vision. That's why in Joel chapter 2 and in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came, the main thing God told 
the man, when he was men, he said, oh, you men will see vision and they will what? Dream dreams. So your young men shall see vision, the old men will dream. Because a man's core function is vision. Having somewhere he's going to and taking this woman along with that journey. It will, whenever they mentioned daughters or may handmaidens, they added prophesy. But when it was only men, they always added dream dreams. Look at it here. And it shall come to pass after what I will pour my seed upon all flesh. See, your sons and daughters shall what? Prophesy. Whenever his sons and daughters, this is prophesy. But when it's only men, he say, your old men shall what? Dream dreams. Your young men shall what? See visions. If you read down, the same thing was replicated. I don't know if it will show. But the point in Acts, but the point is that when it's man and woman, they say they prophesy because women are good at prophesying, at dissecting, at, at breaking down the vision into smaller components. Women are stronger with details, stronger with clarity. If you give a woman a vision, if you see her dissect it here, if you see her break it into little steps, it's an amazing thing she has. She has strong sense for details. Strong, but men don't have strong sense for details at all. Men have stronger sense for vision. I don't want to dissect. There's too much time. I don't want to waste time. But generally, men see better on a straight line, even physically. Women see better by the side of their eye because they are good with details. The ancient men were hunters, so they have to see straight and see that animal no matter how far on a straight line. But the ancient women were gatherers, which means they either gathered food, gathered food stuff, and also be able to watch three or four children playing together around and watch them from the corner of their eyes. So naturally, to women see from men don't know women see from the corner of their eyes. Every time I'm sitting beside your wife typing your phone, she's reading your chat. <laughs> she's reading your chat. Guys don't know. I'm telling you. Women, sorry, I'm revealing your secret. So she's looking straight, saying, "Hey, you want to go out by six o'clock? Who are you going to meet?" She's reading your chat. She's looking like this, but you are here. She's reading your chat. So I want to see who you want to go and meet. She's reading your chat completely. Because she can see from the corner of the eye. And she assumes we too can see from the corner, but we can't. A man must look. His vision is his job. That's why if you have ever gossiped with your husband before, you know he always spoils the gossip. Because among women, women can gossip easily. They want to gossip this couple. They are looking here like this. They're saying, see those two couples. They're just smiling. I don't know what is doing them. Or see that man is looking at me. I don't know what he wants. I hope he's not coming here. They are, the two guys are looking like this. Oh. This is who they are gossiping. The moment you involve man into that gossip, that see that couple, you say, eh, where are they? <laughs> because he can't see from the corner of his eyes. Say, where are they? He say, no, 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 don't look, don't look. <laughs> Every time I travel or I'm in a public place, especially, it happened, it happened to me a lot when I was in Walmart. Uh, when we went for a U.S. store, and every time we go to Walmart, and a couple enters, a black, a black couple, like Africans or Nigerians that will know me, when they enter, the woman, women always recognize me first. So she, I will see her talking. She's not looking at me, you know? I, know. I know they can see from the side. So she's looking straight like this. She had man in a shelf. She's looking straight back. I've noticed she, her tone and way of talking, her body language has changed. So I've noticed, I think she's, she has seen me, and she's not sure. She is that Pastor K? Is that Pastor K? Is that Pastor K? She's not the husband. Is it that guy that is? I know the man will spoil it. She's not looking. She's gossiping me and she's looking at herself. The moment you tell the man, the man will turn, eh, where is he? I'll now wave to the man, it's me. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Look, I know he will spoil the coding. That they're coding. He can't see from here. He has to turn his whole body. Most guys that toasted a woman, he thought you are the one that saw her first. She saw you first. When a woman enters a room, she scopes the room without staring. But men, men can't scope the room without staring. So anytime a man is looking at a woman, everybody knows. <laughs> See this fine girl. <laughs> He's staring, so everybody knows. A woman has already sighted you. She has scanned the room. She has known who she wants to give a chance and who she doesn't want to give a chance. She has scanned the room without looking, without staring. She can, she can see you looking at her. So she has already prepared. And if she likes you, she will come around you. Because she has seen you looking at her. So she'll come and pick something. <laughs> you think you're the one I say you're going to go, you want to tell your friends, hey guys, man, I meet one fine girl today. No, now nah, she meets you, not be you meet her. <laughs> she wanted you to meet her. Guys, ladies, I'm revealing all your scope. Praise God. So, a man's core function is vision. That's the structure God puts in the home, that the man is the head of the home because he starts the family. He's the one that lives for that mother and cleaves to his wife. He starts the family. This is important because God also wants him to be responsible for that family he started. The reason why everything is mixed up is that you two women are saying, we want to be equal with the men. You see, once you become equal with the man, he doesn't feel a sense of responsibility for you. And you don't want to be with a man that doesn't feel a sense of responsibility. Because when it gets tired, it's going to carry his bag. Men do not feel a sense of responsibility for their mate. If you, <laughs> this is important. 
If you appear to him as you meet, he will deal with you as an equal. And the way men deal with equal is to be harsh with their equal. I have no, I have no, I have no sympathy for my equal. He should go and hustle like I'm hustling. That's the idea. He comes to him. But the moment you come under his wings, as you, you are his, his, your, you are his, you are his responsibility. You know, he feels a, a sense of commitment there. But if we are mates, ah, why must I stay with you for 30 years? We don't stay together for 10 years now. Go to do your own. You are his mate, you see. He feels no sense of responsibility. In fact, he will even feel more sense of responsibility to his children than to you. You are his mate now. Go and go work now. Go and do your own thing. He doesn't care. So God intentionally, I believe, put the man in a position of responsibility so that he can also be responsible for his decision of picking a wife. And even in scripture again, when Adam and Eve fell into sin, when God came to the garden, who did God look for first? Adam. He had no problem with Eve, ordinarily. He said, Adam, where are you? You are the one I put in charge. You are the one I put in charge. And how did they fall? The person that is not supposed to be in charge took leadership. When you take leadership, you are not graced for what you want to do. Because you are not the one that got the core vision. So Eve, like a lot of women today, want to usurp authority in their home. Then they lead the whole home astray. Because you are not wired to be the driver. You are wired to be the supporter, the prophesier, not the leader. It doesn't mean you can't lead in your office. As a woman, of course, you can lead in your office. You can lead in business. You can even lead in government. But in the home structure, the way God designed it is that the man leads. If Adam was a good leader, when Eve even fell into sin, if Adam had covered her and stood with her and refused to eat the fruit, I'm sure they would have still been saved. But things degenerated when Adam himself obeyed his wife. There are many weak men like that today that are submitted to their wife. Ask Abraham how his own went when his wife took leadership and said, sleep with my house help. Let's, let's help God. And Abraham too, being very laid back, he submitted to his wife. Today, there was bombing some days ago between Ishmael and Isaac this week. Heavy bombing. Hundreds of people are dead. Isaac is replying. The war eh, of mistake of how many years when a woman took authority that God didn't give her. Hmm? We are still in it. You, you are cutting your home already. Some of you, I'm looking at you now. You're already destroying. You're doing the same thing Eve did, the same thing Sarah did. We don't know how many generations will be dealing with the problem you want to cause. Because you want to lead your husband. Submit to God. I'm not telling you because of anything. That's what God designed. Every time we twat it or we tweak it, the problem is generational. We can't see how bad it's going to be. Adam and Eve, their own. Have we, have we recovered from their own? The one when Eve took authority, have we, 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 we're, still, we're still walking about with clothes. We shall be naked now. Picking clothes every Sunday is not hard work. Every Sunday you're looking for what to wear. That's work. Would I just have our bath and come out? My wabi. What is jacket, jacket, jacket? It's Eve that causes the problem. Just come out. Go to church. Serve the Lord. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So that is the biblical stance. So we have gone to Genesis. Let's go to New Testament. But every time you want to see God's perfect will, Genesis 1 and 2 tells you what God originally designed. Human's, human leadership started after that when man fell. And it was a fallen man that started bringing those ideas. But God's standard was the man is the head, the woman is the helper, and she must be a suitable and adaptable helper. Because you don't even know how your helper will be. So you must be adaptable to whoever you help. Whoever you are assigned to help. Your helper might not be, I mean, your, your, your helpy might not be another person's LP. Somebody's LP likes leadership structure where you give him reports every morning. Another person's one likes the one that you don't even give me reports. Go and do what I, I said you do. So you, you must be adaptable to your own. Be adaptable to your own husband. Other, other husband can have their own style of leadership. So women, stop comparing your husband with your pastor, your husband with your deacon, your husband with a celebrity. Everybody has their own structure. You adapt to your own. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Let's quickly go to the New Testament. God will help us with the time today. First Corinthians 11, you know the scripture. It said the head of every man is Christ. The head of Christ is God. And the head of the woman is the man. 
Is there in scripture? Is there in scripture? DJ, let's be fast because we have, we have to move this thing as fast as possible. Let's continue as 11, guys. Let's be fast. So what are they saying again in this scripture? They are bringing back the structure. Let's see from uh, verse 3. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 3. He said, but I would have you know the head of every man is what? Christ. He says, the head um, and the head of the woman is what? And the head of Christ is what? So, again, women, I will still come to where I will balance some things out, so don't worry. But what they're saying is that it's not like the man is a headless head. What's happening to some women is that they are marrying a headless head and they are complaining that why did God say submit to this man? No, no, no. They, they didn't say submit to any man. They didn't say marry any man. They are expecting you to marry someone also that is under authority. If he's under authority, you have nothing to worry about. Why are Nigerians migrating to developed countries? There is high tax in those countries. There is a, whatever police in those countries. There's everything we're running from in those countries. The difference is that their leadership there is accountable. If the president or the governor does something out of order, there's a system to put them in check. But here, <laughs> that's the major difference between here and there. So your problem is not that you hate submission. Your problem is that you don't like the person you are submitting to. The Nigerian Niger living here, he's going to even face some tough conditions there. The tax in some places are 30%. Tax, um, they, there's hard restrictions there. But he's willing to submit because he believes more in that leadership. There's some level of integrity, honesty. There. Compared to here, anything really goes. Anything, anything. Anything. And there are people that will support it. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the, the big difference. So your issue as a woman is not submission. is that you didn't choose the right person to submit to. See what it says. It says so you, they didn't say go and submit to any man you meet. No. The, the man too has to be under authority. He has, to, he has to have a head. You see, if it's a man that has a head, there will be no problem submitting to him. He said, but I will have you know that the head of every man is what? Christ. So the man himself is not headless. When they say the man is the head, it's not that he's a supreme being. Nobody can talk to him. You know, Africans have translated those things. Again, I don't know if we'll have time. I trust God, Pastor, we'll balance some of these things I'm saying now. I don't have time. You know, Africans have turned being the head to mean, I'm a supreme being. I'm God in this home. Anything I say, if I go out and come back at 2 a.m., you can't ask me what way I went to. That's not what they're talking about. It's something affecting our politics. When somebody thinks he's in leadership, he thinks nobody can question me. That's... The, that's not. My mentor, Reverend Sam, said it that, you know, because we came from a monarchical structure where we have Kabe Isi, Kabe Isi himself means what? Nobody can ask him, can ask him question. So that's the structure we came from, where there's a king and he can do, he can, he can marry people. If you see your daughter going to the stream, he doesn't have to ask you. I mean, that's how kings operate, right? Just bring them, bring them, three of them. So this is, this, is, this is the same people that came into politics, so they still operate that way. Unfortunately for us, we've never had democracy in a long time. Because the first time we started it, it was military, military people that took over. This, if you have been in the military, there's nothing democratic about military. When I talk, you shut up. Military? It's yes, sir. What do soldiers soldier say? Yes, sir. Shoot yourself. Yes, sir. Before you think, oh, myself. So just don't, I went to a military school. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't think. You think for yourself. When a guy don't talk, you don't think. It's in God's room, you finish the thinking. So these are the people that have run the country back to back to back. So we've not really started democracy. We'll soon start it. No, we've not started it. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So they're not saying a headless man. They're saying the head of every man should be in Christ. So the man himself should be submitted to authority. It doesn't mean he can do and undo. It doesn't mean anything he says. He can wake up and say, I'll make sure you don't go to church again. That's not what they're talking about. African men, Africans, you know, they're they, they, they carrying that mentality. That I'm a supreme being. Nobody should question me. I can go out anytime I like. I can come back anytime I like. No! That's not what they're saying. You are not superior to that woman. You are not without accountability. From the day you marry, you're accountable to the people you lead. Are you here, somebody? In, in, in well-developed countries, there are, there, are, there are some kind of mistakes a leader makes. He steps down. 
he resigns. Of course, those things can happen in Africa and we're not yet there. But you so, so being a leader doesn't mean you're not accountable. That's what, that's what Africa thinks. If I'm a leader, I can do anything. Nobody just shut up. Everybody shut up. He said, I will have you to know. He said, I want you to know that the head of every man is what? Christ. So don't go and pick a man in a nice club. Or don't go and pick a woman in a nice club. You can't pick somebody on the streets. I want to have a kingdom marriage. It's a street marriage you have. It's a club marriage you have. You can't pick them. You need to pick them in Christ. Not even just in church. Because I'm going in church and not saved. A church is a hospital. We have mad people here. Some people in church, you, know, you must always get counsel from the chief medical officers, the pastors. We have everybody's file. Tell them, sir, one of your patients, John Obi, is interested in me. And the chief medical officer will say, John Obi, John Obi, John Obi. Which one? Which of the John Obi? Yes, John Obi, fair, with beard, yes. He will look at his file. We know the ones that are responding to treatment and the ones that are not going to treatment. So you can't marry this guy. So it's not everybody in church. It's, they must be in Christ. You see that by their behavior. They are yielded and submitted to authority also. So you pick them in Christ and the head of that woman is the man and the head of Christ is what God. So the structure God designed is God at the top, Christ next, man next, the woman next. In a family, in life, we're equal. In the kingdom of God, we're equal. Because in heaven, there's no marriage. I hope you know. So, spiritually speaking, we're equal before God. But in a home structure, a home structure is like a government structure. You can't have a country where there's no leader. Say, everybody, just speak your mind. That country will not make any decision. Or, 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 or a company where there's no head. Say, everybody in this company, just be saying what you like. That company will not make any... They'll, they'll, be, so, they'll be so scattered. Am I correct? You will come one day, accountant has opened a different thing. This one has opened another, another product and started selling it. You say, did you, who did you tell? No, I'm a product developer. So I developed this battery in the bank and I'm selling it. You say, we are banking products. Say, no, but the, the people are buying battery. Do you see how stupid it looks? That's how a family wants to, that's how some people want the family to look. That there's no authority, there's no head, there's no order. Part of this is why God put, okay, let, let me finish this one. Um, it's the same Corinthians. If you read down, it says, because the man was not made for the woman, but the woman was made for the man. Same thing we just read in Genesis. They are just trying to paint that same picture. And that the man did not come from the woman, but the woman came from the man. It doesn't mean the woman is inferior. It's just saying it's order. It creates order. Hallelujah. There is anything that has more than one head is a monster. Anything that has more than one head is what? A monster. It, it helps create order. There, there can't be a company without a head. There can't be a country without a head. Anytime there's a group of people working together, there must be leadership. Or else there will be a big problem. Because all of us can have different opinions. Imagine if this church had no pastor. Imagine. And we come every Sunday. Then if you say, no, today is concert. Then uh, Minister Femi said, no, today is prayer meeting. Why we're doing that? Prophet Wale come and say, no! Today is prophetic night. Do you see how funny it looks? That's how some people want to run marriage. All of you come with your opinion. No, sir. No, sir. There must be a structure and an order. If not, we will not all be seated like this. Because while I'm preaching, he wants to lead praise and worship. The usher wants to worship out because he wants to clean this room. Do you see madness? This is my brother. Sit down. Don't worry yourself. I think my time is up, but... You were here when I was doing announcements. You didn't talk. <laughs> but somebody follow what I'm saying. It's for order. It's not because a, a, a man is superior. Leadership in the home is not superiority. It's more responsibility. It's for order. It's for order. And when as a woman you are rebellious in the home, you are scattering that home and there's no telling how far that your decision will go. With all the technological adv advancement I've seen all over the world, I've, I've entered those Teslas that drive themselves. Some of you have seen the video when I posted it. I mean, it was crazy. You just type your address. The car will be going by itself. It makes tons. It stops, it stops by itself. Stop. Ah! Many times I want to touch it. I say, leave it. I say, ah! I can't leave the car to be going. I want to control it. But the car was just controlling itself. You don't have to touch it. It drives itself. Ah! With all that advancement technology, I've never seen a car with two steering wheels. Still one person. That's it. The car has five seats. One steering. What are they saying? That no matter how many of you are here, no matter how smart you are here, all of you 
must submit to whoever is driving. If they give everybody steering in the car, that car will not go anywhere. Because the person at the back says, I want to stop. I want to buy Gala. He wants to stop. They don't say, no, let's move. I'm rushing. They don't say, I want to turn right. So I want to turn left. The car won't move. So no matter how many seats are in the car, even cars that have 42 seats, 32 seats, there's still only one steering. They're saying, before you enter, look at the driver. Because you are putting your life in this person's hand. But once you enter, you can't drive. You have to let him drive. Either you do not enter or you enter and submit. But many people don't know what marriage is about. They just want to marry for marrying sake. Mm -mm. Where is um, Tokwe? You want to marry Dayo? Are you ready to submit to his leadership? Not that you will control him in the marriage. Are you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not attacking you. I'm just using it as an example. Yes, I'm not attacking you. Uh, because, you know, most times when, when I do wedding, people are woo, I engage your woo, woo, woo. Are you sure? Can you submit to this man? Because some people, once they enter now, they, have, they take the steering for the man. Take on, sit down. They start driving. And you don't even know where you're driving to. Are you ready to submit? All this dancing you're dancing during the wedding, are you ready to submit? To the, do, do you trust this man's leadership? If you don't trust the leadership, don't marry him. If, you, if you're leading yourself better, then lead yourself. But don't use marriage to experiment. Are you here, somebody? Let me try and rush the remaining five minutes I have. So Ephesians, I'm the head. That's the beauty of being the head. You can add time when it's necessary. <laughs> My wife, Pastor, and we we'll balance all these things when I come. She will defend you people, don't worry. Because I've seen a lot of women tear their homes apart. That's what the Bible says, a wise woman builds a house, but a foolish one plucks it down. I've seen a lot of men talk to their husband and see if he's their mate. Sometimes even he's their junior. Useless man, bloody fool, idiot. Wow. Wow. That's anti scriptural, makes no covenant sense. You must always talk to him as a leader. It doesn't mean you don't have opinions. Though. That's not what this is. And for men, you need to understand just because your wife is giving you a contrary opinion or advice doesn't mean she's rebellious. That's not what it is. She has equal rights in the home. It's just that structurally speaking, you come first. It's a thing of order. Everything we do in life, there's a way we try and arrange who comes first. For instance, if we're in a queue, who, is, who comes first in a queue? Who goes first in a queue? Some people are not sure, you're confused. If we are do, queuing up, who goes first? It's first come, first serve. It's not the difficult. Don't be worried. Somebody think, hmm, which one else? No. So the way we create order in, in, a, in a queue is that we follow who comes first. By that arrangement, um, the man came first. Maybe that's not your style. In some other places, the way we follow order is who is older, who came to life first. If you follow that order too, who comes first? In some places, the way we follow the order is who is stronger. Because you can beat everybody. If we follow that order, who comes first? Most times the man. I'm not saying you should beat anybody. I'm just... That was the funny part of the illustration. Okay. So there's a way we, so no matter what you're saying, there's a way people create order in everything. On that way we choose who comes first is who the owner of the company says should come first. The owner of marriage, who do you say should come first? So what, where, on what ground are you arguing this argument? When you're boarding plane, it doesn't matter who came first to the boarding gate. What they do when they want to start boarding. They can start with things like, oh, children should come. They are the owner of the airline. You can say, ah, ah, I came here first. Say, thank you, sir. We are the owner of the airline. We want to board children first. Sometimes they can come and say, oh, veterans, people in the army, if they are abroad, they do that a lot. People in the army come first. You can say, ah, 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 I first him come. Mm -mm. The owner of the airline. Sometimes they say, oh, business class, first class passengers, can you come? You can say, ah, ah, ah I first him come. Mm -mm. In that order, they are the owner of the plane. I don't know if you are getting what I'm saying. So leadership is not superiority. It's actually responsibility. It doesn't mean a woman is useless. It doesn't mean a woman is inferior to you. Praise God. Ephesians 5, and I'll close from here. 
Ephesians 5, and I'll close from here. Ephesians, now, there are, there are about three or four places it is mentioned clearly. Maybe we'll just read, show them so that we will write them down. In Titus chapter 2, verse 3 to 5, because some people are wondering, where does the Bible say a woman should submit to a man? It's all over scripture. It's not even in one. Whenever you see something re-emphasized more than once or twice or thrice in scripture, it means it's, it's something that is a major thing. Usually some things are mentioned only once. You can do like you didn't see it. When it's re-emphasized once, twice, thrice, usually, God knows people are going to argue about this thing. So I need to give them, in the amount of two or three witnesses, every word is what? Established. That's the key to Bible interpretation. Where you see it established two or three times, it means it's, don't play with this rule. So Titus 2, from, you can hear, let the aged women likewise, let them to be in behavior as becoming holiness, not false accusers, not giving too much wine, teachers of good things, that they, the older women should teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, to chase, keep us at home, and be obedient to what? Husbands. That's one. Go to Colossians 2, um, 2.18 or 3.18. Quickly, DJ. Let's be fast, let's be fast. DJ, I need you to be fast today. He said, wives, do what? Serve unto what? As it is what? Feet unto the Lord. Remember, that's why I told you that these things are for people that are submitted to Christ. If you are submitted to Christ, it will be difficult to submit to the scripture. It's not for rebellious women or men. Ephesians also now ended it. There are many others, but I don't have time. Ephesians says it there. Um, it says, wives, submit yourselves to your own. I think 23 or 22, yes. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto what? So you see, you see that. I can give you some, a few more, but we don't want to waste time. The point is that it's clearly emphasized. Now, go to verse 21 of this scripture. Some, some woke ladies have been pushing this scripture to say, submitting yourself one to another in the fear of the Lord. Is, let's submit to ourselves. First of all, let's assume, let's assume they are correct. The interpretation some of them give it is that if I say, hey, baby, please, let's go to Keja. She will say, yes, I submit. Then the next minute, she say, no, let's go to VI. You two submit. That's the idea they have, that we are scattering the house. No. At all. <laughs> that would be very confusing structure. Imagine you tell everybody in the office, all of you, obey yourself. Or in the army, give people gun. Tell them, obey yourself. <laughs> you see how stupid that looks? That's, God cannot be funny like this. This, not, this scripture has nothing to do with marriage. Go to like three verses ahead of this. I have to close down. Three verses ahead of this, before this. Quickly, DJ, I need you to be fast. He said, giving thanks for all things unto God. The Father of God, next verse. He says, speaking to what? Yourselves. So this whole chapter, to all this point, they were talking about church. They were talking to church people. They said, speak to yourselves. They were talking to church. Speak to yourselves. Speaking in harm, hymns, and all those things. Continue. Quickly, 20. Um, giving thanks, 21. Um, they now said, give me 21, quickly. They now said, submitting what? Yourselves. All this part, they are referring to church. Singing to yourselves. Thanking God together. Submitting to yourselves in the church. Don't, don't let somebody want to dominate another person. Then when they entered marriage... Scripture is always that explicit. It mentioned who he was talking to. Next 22. What's the first word there? Wives. So it has nothing to do with the previous verse. The previous verse is not talking about marriage at all. It's talking about church. Singing to yourselves. Doing this to yourselves. He was talking to church. Then he entered marriage and he mentioned specifically who this is for. He didn't say husband and wife. He said who? Wives. Again, another thing this means is that there's nowhere in scripture God told men that women should submit to them. So any man going about trying to insist that my wife must submit. You are not following scripture. God never told you, go and make a woman submit. God was just telling the women that look, the best way to get the best out of a home and out of your husband is to be yielded. Submission doesn't mean slavery. It doesn't mean you're a slave. It doesn't mean you have no voice. It doesn't mean you are like a lamb. Anything they say, you obey. Don't go to church. Yes. Kill yourself. Yes. Sit down there. Yes. That's not the concept. It's not control. If you look at where, you must always use scripture to interpret scripture. If you look at where the Bible says, talks about leadership, it said, he that must be head among you. Let him what? Serve. So you must always use scripture to interpret scripture. In the mind of God, when he's talking about leadership, he's not talking about somebody dominating and controlling people. He's talking about somebody serving people. So if the man is following scripture and under Christ, he understands that his job is also to serve you. I serve my wife. She's here. 
I carry her plates. I do things for her. I serve her. Because African men don't understand this. Some of them get abroad now. They can't do home housework. The marriage now breaks. They say, oh, it's abroad breaking your marriage. No, it's not abroad. Abroad can't break something that was strong. Is that you do understand scripture. Use scripture to interpret scripture. In that same Ephesians 5, let's go to it. This is my last scripture and I'll close. In Jesus' name. You put a doubt us because you laughed. Like Sarah, you put a doubt us. Yes, give me 22. Let's start from there quickly. DJ. Wives, do what? Unto your own husbands. As what? They are saying the way you submit to God. You saw the way um, Tokwe um, came up here. When she was greeting me, she did courtesy. Uh, you'll be doing that same kind of reference. You see. Even if you don't do it physically in your heart, you must carry that same kind of reference for your husband. And I've seen the way some women talk to their husband. Stupid, bloody fool. <laughs> I'm shocked. What? He said, submit like unto God. Look at this. Look at the next verse. He said, for the husband is what? So it's, it's clear. It's clearly emphasized. I don't know how anybody can have issue with this. It's clearly emphasized all over the scripture. Head of, even as Christ is what? The head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Look at the next verse. He said, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to what? Their own husbands. In what? Again, all this in everything is in context. It doesn't mean a man can tell you don't go to church, don't go to, don't be born again, don't pray. No, he doesn't have jurisdiction over God. Do you understand? So please, I don't have, and we'll go into that when she comes. So it doesn't mean you're a mumu. It doesn't mean the man say, give me your whole salary. And he's a useless person uh, using it in Niger, uh, betting. Betting on, 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 on Chelsea and Man U that can't win. <laughs> Sorry. That was a mistake. It was slip of tongue. Sorry. Asna is doing well. Now I can't yab Asna again. Sorry. It's Asna I used to yab, but they are doing well. Now I can't yab them. So, is somebody getting what I'm saying? So, that's not what they mean. The man is, is a useless person. He's using all the rouse rent to go and do betting, to go and drink beer. And he say, give me your salary. The Bible says submit. Any man trying to tell you the Bible says submit has already lost his authority. He has missed the point. We've been married for about 18 years now. We've never read this scripture together in the, as a family. Never. I've never had to quote scripture to my wife that, you know, the Bible says submit, you know I'm the head. I've, it has never happened. We've never had that discussion. Because number one, I married a Christian that already knew the word of God and was submitted to God. So as we we're coming, we both knew our roles. No role is better than the other. God is not a chauvinist. God is not a feminist. All right? Every time you read scripture, you always see a balance in what he does. He's not supporting any gender. Is that you, you are the one that is not understanding the scripture, or maybe the men or the women around you are misinterpreting the scripture. But if you always look at scripture the way scripture is, nobody's role is easier or better. God is always balanced. I've never had to tell my wife, you know, the Bible says, you know, never, 18 years, ask her. We've never said, eh, why are you not submitting? Eh, I'm the, no. She came with understanding of scripture, of what her role is. And trust me, ask her, I, I will hardly do anything without telling Ask her, people that live with us know. She, she, she's incredibly smart and intelligent. So I don't even do things without consulting her. Because being the head, some men think it means, I make a decision. You have made a decision, you've been wrecking the family. Being the head means you check the quality of people around you. Let them also contribute their expertise. Doesn't mean you are dominating. That's not what, in African people confuse scripture. I'm the head. No, anytime a man is trying to quote that scripture, he has already missed the point. See what it says. Therefore, um, it now said, husbands, do what? Love your wives, even as what? Christ loved the church and did what? He died. So women are complaining. Why is our own heart? Submit. See what they told the man to They say she will what? Die. If you don't want to submit, do you want to die? Do you prefer die? Is die easier or harder? No, guys. Is die easier or harder? You know why? Because for most women, submission is like dying. You know why? Because you think faster than a man. Many times, don't tell anybody this one. Many times you think better than a man. So that's why for you to submit to somebody you think you're better than is like dying. <laughs> women know what I'm talking about. Women that are married to men. Single girls don't understand what I'm saying. But married women, do you understand what I'm saying, right? Because a lot of times the woman knows that this decision it can't work. But the man says, I'm the head! <laughs> because you have hair in your nose doesn't mean you know what you're doing. It doesn't mean you know what you're doing. I'm the head. You must follow me. But the woman already knows without even thinking long. Because she thinks way faster. She has already seen that you're about to lose our family money. 
You're about to lose our savings. You're about to put us in trouble. She can see it immediately. And she still has to follow your lead. So for many of them, it's like dying. So this die, you must die. Because that's what marriage is. Two people come and they die on the altar. Not only one, not only woman. The man too dies. It's like dying. When you feel you know more than somebody. <laughs> let's see. See, let's finish it quickly. So it says, um, the man should die the way Christ died. That means this man should be ready to lay down his life. You see, if every man is leading their home in a way that your wife can see you are sacrificing for her, your wife can see that all your decisions are for her good, she will not have an issue submitting. When me and my wife were getting married, I told her, hey, baby, we're not going to do a big wedding. Thank God she too was in that train of thought. We're not going to do a big wedding. She said, yes. I said, I would rather not print program in the wedding, but I want you to have a car when we are married. Do you see? I didn't say, let's have a small wedding so that I will have money. No. I was saying, let's have somebody so that when we get married, you, I don't want you to be entering bike to go to market. I said, I want you also to be able to buy a small car once we get married. So we cut out a lot of things from our wedding. We didn't do program. You know program, the blueprint. This is the people who used to find themselves. I said, we can't afford it. We did photocopy three pieces. Photocopy. One for the MC, one for the pastor, one for maybe us or somebody. The MC will tell us what to do. It's time to stand. They say, stand. We don't need program. We cut up many things. We, our, our wedding was by seat. We had limited invitations by seat. Everything. And all the money we were able to gather from there. Immediately we got married. I bought her a car immediately. Do you understand? If a woman sees that your decisions are actually for her, you are putting her first. You are sacrificing. If there's only one car in the house, who should have the car? The woman. It's simple. It's simple. That's dying. That's dying. If we are trying to look for where we are going to live, we we'll we'll have to live closer to the woman's job. So that she will not be stressed. You, man, you can walk in the Jebode from Lagos. Because <laughs> you are stronger and, you know, you are more rugged. Do you see what I'm saying? If you, are making a, if you are making decisions like that, there's no woman in this world that won't submit. Women are submissive. Very submissive beings. Paul even said it, that don't I have right to lead women about, to lead a sister to? Women don't mind to be led if they know you. you see, see women in salon, you know women are submissive. See them in salon. Sit down here. Bend back. Their neck is bending them. They are doing braids. How many hours does it take to do braids? Eh? So, somebody that sit down for six hours, is it not submissive? Do you want to submissive? If they know that what you are doing is for to make them look finer, make them feel better, they will submit. Is that, the issue is that all your decisions are selfish. So she's constantly rebelling. All our accounts is in my wife's name. I don't have token, I don't have alert, I don't have anything. So I'm the one that beg her for money. <laughs> it gives her comfort. So I've already told her today about one car that I like. Mm. The money's with her, I'm not going to beg her. So you see this car, I like it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you are leading in a way that she has comfort, she will submit. Women are not rebel as rebellious as they think. They submit. Have you seen any woman in a plane? The pilot say, um, uh, put on your seatbelt. She say, why? Why are you controlling me? Have you seen that before? Because she knows the pilot is trying to protect her. Say, we're about to hit some turbulence. Everybody fasting your seatbelt. You see that woman that is rebellious at home. Psh! Thank you. Hallelujah. Did you get something this morning? Come on, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Remember, Pastor M will teach second service on the same topic. Father, we thank you for every home and every heart that is here. We ask that there be healing. Let the men begin to lead the way you designed them to lead. Let them lead the way Christ led the church. Let them be willing to die die to self, die to ego, die to pride, to lead their homes. And Lord, I pray for the women. Let them also receive grace to be yielded and submitted to their husbands. Give them the grace to be patient. Give them the grace to forgive the bad decisions their husbands have made. We thank you even for the singles. They will marry men and women that are yielded and submitted to God. With decree shall be so in the name of Jesus. Please, as all heads are bowed, 
or eyes closed. If there's anybody here, you are not yet born again. You see, all these things we've preached doesn't concern you yet. The first person you need to submit to is Christ. So if you're here and you're not born again, put your hand on your chest. I'm going to pray with you in one minute. If you're not born again, put your hand on your chest. Say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sin. Wash me with your blood. I receive the grace to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father, for I am born again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand.